yeah, Petey. Looks like it's that time of the month again. You're on your period. No, you stupid funny dog. It's time for a game review. But what game should I review? How about you choose from one of these games that is conveniently setting right by me? Good idea, Petey. I'm sure one of those games is good to review. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got Triforce Heroes. This would have been good if my internet is currently working right now, so... Oh, Rune Factory 4? I love this game! If I hadn't lost it a few years ago. But... Super Mario 3... No! Scribble... No... Scribble Knots! Scribble Knots... Scribble, I, uh, scribble knots. This game is hard. I don't, I did the Super Mario Galaxy. I love this game. I can't wait to review. Oh. Oh no. That was all my games. Well, it looks like you won't be able to make a video. No, Petey, that can't happen. If I don't upload a video, I'll start losing subscribers. <laughs> Wow, you're so pathetic. What makes you say that? God, you're so freaking weird. If I give you a new game, would you shut up? Yeah? Okay then, you might want to step back a little bit. Whoa, what kind of game is it? Some say it was created by God himself. And rumor has it that from just hearing the name of the game, would make you crap yourself from its pure awesomeness. Don't worry, Petey. I can handle it. What's the name? Portal Knights! This lovely lock of hair belongs to the scalp of a game-making company known as 505 Games. The makers of beloved games like Naughty Bear, Terraria, and Cooking Mama, especially Terraria. This game is a great mix of the 2D platformer crafting survival sandbox genre. I mean, look at this thing! Who could ignore a game with such action, adventure, and fantasy? All rolled into one. But what if this game was in 3D? And I'm not talking about 3D glasses, I'm talking about something like this! Stuff like that. Real cool stuff like that. I know what you might be thinking. Jake, I own every version of Terraria! Even this one! And there's not any 3D! THERE'S NOT GOOD 3D! Well, as much as I'm making it sound, this is not another version of Terraria. But besides being 3D, what's so different about this game from Terraria? But I'll get into that later. But we're gonna see the other stuff that this game has to offer by PLAYING IT! Let's start that. Right now. We're gonna start playing right <coughs> now! Unlike most popular sandbox games, Portal Knights has a story. The basic gist of it is that the world is torn apart by... The Fracture. And now the only way to travel between the torn parts of the world is through ancient portals, who they are guarded by covetous fiends who thrive in the darkness. And now the world needs a hero who can restore light to the portals and reunite the peaceful realm. And what better person to do it than this guy? I mean, look at him. He definitely doesn't look like he would kill you in your sleep. One of the other things that makes me think this game is very identical to Terraria is the character creating mechanic. Of course, you got your traditional options like your hair, face, eyes, and voice! Wow, some serious coding went into this! Even if there's only two voices to choose from and they sound the same. You can also pick a class for your character. You can pick from Archer, Mage, or Swordsman. Traditionally, I would go with Swordsman because I'm more of a close combat fighter. But since I gave this guy really, really big eyes, I decided to go with Archer. Now all we have to do is name him. Yeah, there we go. This is probably the most appropriate name for this individual. It's the word that the witnesses will use when describing him to the police. And now that we got all that crap done, it's finally time to start the game. Whoa! Whoa! My whole life flashed before my eyes. Most of it was spent in front of the computer screen. Eh, oh well. In all seriousness, this game is amazing. The world in the game looks well designed and pretty cool. It does have a Minecraft feel to it, given that the whole world is made of blocks. And by world, I mean gigantic floating island. 
And obviously, this game does have the traditional crafting survival stuff, like crafting stations, combat, and building. And also, who could forget punching trees? Punch that tree. Keep on punching it. It's gonna break someday. Punch it so fast that your hand turns into a nub. There are four different crafting stations that allow you to craft different items. The workbench allows you to craft furniture in different blocks. The furnace lets you smelt ores and make ingots. The anvil lets you make tools with different ingots. And the altar lets you awaken the demon in your soul. And also... The building mechanic is great too. And with all the furniture and blocks you can craft, it gives you more options to use when building. The combat is okay, I guess. It's a little dry when you only use one kind of weapon. It's more fun when you use different weapons from other classes. Yeah, but that's regular stuff you can find in a lot of survival sandbox crafting game stuff. What makes this game so different from the other games like this genre? And if you're wondering all this, then hold your horses, because I'm about to explain it. Like I mentioned earlier, the whole story and game is revolved around you reuniting the world through portals. You can find these portals randomly generated throughout the land. But Jake, this doesn't look like a Stargate portal thing. This looks more like a Tiki. Well, that's because it isn't activated yet. To reactivate the portals, you need to collect portal shards. You can sometimes collect them from when you kill enemies or mine blocks. Portal shards are used to make portal blocks, which you also use to fill in the center part of the portal with to reactivate it. And here's another question you might be thinking. Jake, where did these portals take you? Well, to different worlds or lands or wherever the crap you want to call them. They just take you places. This actually makes up for having limited worlds. And because of this, not only can you explore one floating island, you can explore a whole bunch of different floating islands. And I totally respect their decision on this instead of going with the infinitely generated terrain like Minecraft has. I actually bought this game blindly, only knowing it was a sandbox game and was developed by 505 Games. And the only exploring part was traveling to different worlds through portals was kind of a bummer for me. But after a few minutes of playing, I realized it's actually pretty cool. It gives a greater sense of adventure because you never know where you're going to end up next. You could end up in a desert, a tropical land, or whatever this place is. Pumpkin land? Which I would automatically assume that's what it's called because there's pumpkins everywhere. Looks like the Great Pumpkin is coming early this year. Hear that, Linus? You better get your act together, he's coming for your soul! Besides the biomes, there is a great variation what you can find in the different floating islands. Like the different enemies, the ores, the plants, etc. And as you progress through the different floating islands, you'll find different ores, the enemies will be stronger, and MORE PLANTS! And in some of the floating islands, you can find structures, including dungeons, which are fairly disappointing. Despite which island you're on, most of the dungeons will be the same. But the one thing I've noticed that is reoccurring throughout all the different dungeons is this. That's a flying eyeball! That's a flying eyeball! Okay. Why? Why is it like every time I open a door in a dungeon, there's always a flying eyeball staring right at you in the face? It's like 75% of the time, there's always going to be a room filled with these things. And they're not even that powerful, they're just annoying. And I swear, it's like they're in every room in all of the dungeons. I mean, come on, how common is it for you to run into one of these things and end up putting it in your game? <laughs> Okay, I guess it's pretty common. But besides treasure and more monsters, you can find unactivated portals in the dungeons. I reactivated it and went through it and, as usual, ended up in another floating island. But there was a catch to this island. In order to reactivate the portals in this island, I needed to collect yellow portal blocks. The blue portal blocks are the first ones you start out with, and they only take two blue portal shards to craft into one block. But the yellow portal blocks require three yellow portal shards in order to craft one block. One of the things that's annoying about this is getting the yellow portal shards. The shards have a lower chance of dropping from enemies than they do with blue portal shards. But as you go from portal to portal and discover new islands, at a certain point you'll have to start using yellow portal blocks to reactivate further portals. And it doesn't stop there. There are other two different colored portal blocks. In which, of course, they are harder to get and they need more portal shards to create one block. I honestly think this is a weird way to make the game last longer. You could just make more levels, but... Eh. And since we're almost done talking about stuff related to portals, MAPS! Who's the guy you need no, 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 not that map. No. No. No! By pressing the M key on your keyboard, it'll pull up a map that shows you all the floating islands you've been to. It also tells you the name of the floating island, what enemies are there, and what kind of ores you can find there. But the map is not only used for that. You can use it to fast travel to any island you've been to. Using the map is just like going through a regular portal, except it's more accessible. 
God, there's so much stuff in this game! I swear, this driver's manual is a lot easier to remember. But if you think we're done there, <laughs> no! I have one more thing to show you. And now, it's time to go to the Worm Pit. Here it is, the Worm Pit. It's finally time, and holy crap, this boss fight is amazing! Yes, basically the boss is a gigantic worm. And to defeat him, you gotta hit his tail, which knocks him over, and you gotta slash his face until he dies! And man, I'm just baffled from how good this boss fight is. It's like a Legend of Zelda boss fight. I guess I'm just not used to seeing highly programmed things like this in other games like Portal Knights. I'm probably used to the <coughs> crappy Minecraft boss fights. I would also like to mention that the music that plays in the background while you battle it out with this monster is awesome. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. I can hardly say anything bad about this game. It's just so adventurous and amazing, and it even creates its own original concept that separates it from the other games like it. And I haven't even completed the other two bosses that are currently in the game. It makes me wonder what this game is going to be like a few years from now. But sadly, my adventure ends here. Someone once told me, as one tale ends, another may go on. But it wasn't really a person that told me, it was more of a quote I found on the internet. But Portal Knights would forever be a game that is closest to my heart. Now is the time for- Jake, my doggy dish is empty. Go get me some food. Would you shut up, Petey? I'm trying to do something cool for my video! No, you shut up. One day dogs will rise up over the human race and then you'll be the one that has to eat out of a dish. Gah. Now is the time for you, the people, watching this video, to start your own tale. An adventure not even you could dream of. And finish for what I have started, known as the game Portal Knights. Hey, did you like the video? It took me two months to make. It's like two months of my life I won't get back, so I hope you like it. If you want to see more Five Turnips, click this link to go to the playlist. If you want to see the last episode of Five Turnips, click right here. And if you want to, I don't know, subscribe, it's right there. You can click it, it won't hurt. And if you want to buy Portal Knights, you can click the link in the description to go to the Steam page. New videos of the Five Turnips will be released monthly, so check back in another month, hopefully. And again, hope you guys liked the video. See you later until the next episode of Five Turnips, and bye!